welcome to the very third episode of the Rainbow Sparkle Show, featuring me, your adorable little host, Angel McKenzie Pat, and what world gangsta rent. So, what we're going to do is delve back into the world of science, because we love science around here, don't we? But we're going to go into the world of quantum physics this time, because, you know, that one's got the most bling bling for the buck, doesn't it? So, what we're going to do is examine the multiverse. You know how in the multiverse is like billions and billions of universes and like each one has a small difference from this one? Or perhaps in this universe that the sky is green or orange or something. Or in this universe we like, we drink water or something rather than not water. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the background is different in this world. I don't know, it's bubbles, some sort of lava bubbles. I hope they're not spicy. Oh, I'm just kidding, it's not really bubbles, it's just the background has changed. So, we're going to do that, but we're going to use me as the key variable. So the only thing in the universe that will switch is me. So, without further ado, let's do it. Shall we? I think we shall. All right then, so for the firstest multiverse that we're going to explore, we're going to pose the question, what if I was evil? Let's find out. So, I imagine if I were evil, I would totally be wearing all black and sinister colours and, you know, sinister accessories like a black leather band and another band that's dark in colour, some things, little pretty things on my hands that are also black and like a dark other thing that's sparkly. And also I would probably wear a watch because, you know, evil people need to wear watches. Because, you know, when you're truly evil, you must learn to coordinate your evil shenanigans with all your minions. You know, you'd be like, oh, like, oh, we're going to do a crime at, oh, 6,000 hours. And, and right now it's, oh, 5,000 hours, so we're going in 1,000 hours. We're going to do a crime and we're going to be evil against society. It would never be devilishly clever. Also, I feel as though if I were evil, all right, I would probably do lots of swears, you know what I mean? Because bad people and like evil people and stuff, they're always doing swears. So I'd do lots of swears, like I'd be all like, hey, you poop butt face person, you better scram the heck out of here. Or like, let the H-E double hockey sticks out of here, little rat scallion. And they would be all like, oh no, and they'd be like, yes, yeah, right, because I'm scary. And then they would run away, probably. You know what I mean? What? What do you mean those aren't swears? Those are totally swears. I know my swears, okay? Like, I'm totally, like, street tough. You know what I mean? I've got all of my street intelligence. And I know what swears are. And I know the good ones. You know, like, the one with the F, you know? It's like, you, you freaking person that's, that's not attractive at all. I don't like you. I think it's a swear. And I've got all the swears in my mind. You know, like, well, well, there, well, there's the one, like, um, the stuff about, like, um, no, that's not one. Oh, I know one. Uh, no, that's that's a drink. Hmm. Maybe I don't know any swears. And you know what? Even if I don't know swears, right, I could just go on YouTube. So if I was, like, evil or something, I would go on YouTube or I would go on some other social network and I would go to, like, a swear tutorial. You know what I mean? And I would learn all the delightful swears that all of the fancy evil people are using these days. Ah, oh, that would be delightful. And I would be so extra evil, I would scare myself. <laughs> Also, if I was evil, I would definitely be chewing gum, like this. Because, you know, dastardly people love to chew gum because it shows their defiance for authority or something. Probably. Look at my evil grimace. Arrgh. Evil, right? You're scared, probably. Let's try something a little more lighthearted to just get our hearts back on the regular rhythm again, okay? So, what if I were a blue-collar Joe? Let's do it, shall we? I think we shall. Okay, so I feel like if I was like a blue collared Joe, I would have like a nice plaid shirt and I would wear very little bling, you know, maybe one sparkle bracelet to keep it light, and you know, a delightful little worker boy hat, and also still a watch, because worker men, they need to keep track of the time so they know what time it is to like sign off from their jobs and go catch a bear with their friends. And also, I would probably be like at the construction site, and I'd be all like, you know, ogling the ladies as they walk by, and be like, oh, I'd love to get into those hot pants. What size are they? Like a size six, because I could totally rock those. Also, they bring out the colour of my eyes. But you know, the problem with like physical labour, like you get injured all the time, you know, like these construction boys are always like damaging their arms or like breaking their little bones and like getting scratches on their skin and stuff. And you know, I really don't like getting scratches on my skin because I've got really soft, delicate, smooth skin and it needs to be maintained. Yeah. Oh my golly, I'm so very good at blue colouring, aren't I? If I know one thing about construction is that it starts with a K or a, a Q. 
Epsilon? I may be a university student, but I'm not a spelling major, okay? So, get off my back, class. Go blue collaring! <laughs> what if I was a Star Wars? Okay, so if I was a Star Wars, right, I imagine I'd be like that one Lieutenant Commander D2. He's like totally a robot or whatever. So I'd be like, oh my god, look at me, I'm a robot. And I've got like no human emotions. I can't even be happy or smile or anything. And you know, I can't ever be sad, you know, and the inability to be sad, you know, it really, it really makes me sad, you know. I'm sorry, I'm just doing a little space crying right now. Also, wow. If I was like totally a Star Wars person, I would be like a Lieutenant Commander, as you can see by my pips here. I would not be a captain because, you know, I still want to be able to say, um, yes sir, I copy that sir, I copy the H-E double Q out of that sir. What do you mean, double Q isn't a word, a letter? It is. So people are always saying, oh, it's blah 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 blah, double Q, and then they go on with other letters, and they put that in, in the order that they come in. I mean, you know what else? I would probably be singing Alamarang all the time, you know, like Alamarang, count two, four, Alamarang, then three more, Alamarang, if you can see, Alamarang, you come with me. You know, stuff like that. You know what? Every once in a while I get all serious and I'd be like, You will be assimilated, resistance is dispute. And they would know what that means. A lot of people have told me, you know what, you talk about Fred a little bit too much. You like Fred too much. And you watch your videos too much. And you listen to his music too much. And I'm like, all like, you know what? <laughs> Fred is life. So, what if I was Fred? <laughs> hey, it's Fred! <laughs> okay, so like, no offense to people who like plain blue shirts with like, the name on it and like, their face on it. But I prefer something with a little more spice to it. So I think I would put a little more whack, a little more dramatic emphasis into the wardrobe. Maybe something like... This. Hey, it's Fred! And I, of course, am your host, Frederick Bigglehorn the Fourth. Okay, so I've got like a delightful little shirt with, you know, the Union Jack on it. So we're celebrating history and, you know, the Queen. Ah, such a lovely lady. As you know, the only girl in the world prettier than Queen Elizabeth is my fair Judy. Ah, Miss Swoon. I'm going to kiss her one day after we're married, of course. We're not Philistines. And also, if I were Fred, I would probably put a little bit of a different spin on things, you know? Like, instead of being into Judy, I'd be like all about Kevin, right? And I'd be all like, On the first day of Christmas, my cabin gave to me a little baby squirrel in a tree. Or like, Hey, Kevin, I'm scared to face the truth about me and your health. I'd be all like, Oh my god, I just peed in the pool. My mom says I'm not supposed to pee in there. Oh, you know what? She can't tell me what to do. I'm peeing in it right now. <laughs> and of course I'll be doing lots of freestyle dancing, you know, because I want to see you do what you do when you're working it. Stuff like that, you know. I'll be like doing all kinds of robotic dances and steppy dances and flossing with my body. <laughs> For me, cause I don't ask for a lot. <sighs> Why is that one so hard? <sighs> I wear the jeans down low, that's just the way I flow. Uh, I think I might even change Kevin's name to Jesse. You know, I don't care, I like Jesse better. Nicer, prettier. You're Jesse now. Jesse. Bear! Scary! Let's run away! One thing's for certain, it would be Oh, Fong Fong! Tong Hong E! Hong Oh Oh Kong! This part is off the hook! That kind of thing. So, for the next one, we're going to go with a really deep question, something you've always wanted to know about yourself. What if I was a pickle? Okay, so if I were like a pickle or whatever, right? I think instead of being like a regular drab green pickle or like a grickle, I'd rather be like a fabulous pink pickle, you know? A Pickle. <sighs> hey, down here, look at me. Look. I'm a pickle and I'm all brined up. Well, hello, banana. You're looking smug as always. Hello, pickle. You know you cannot defeat me, for I am your better. Yes, Mr. Banana, I know, we've already established it, you know, you're larger than me, therefore superior in every way, and I acquiesce to your splendor. 
Is that what you wanted to hear, Mr. Banana? Does that make you feel like a big banana? You've won this round, Mr. Pickle, but I shall get your briny hide in the end. No, you didn't. Remember? I just surrendered to your greatness. So you totally vanquished me yet again and without even trying this time. You're so good, Mr. Banana. Mmm. Well, either way, I'm not a fan. You know what you are, Mr. Banana? You are not unlike this little fellow. You're a lolly. <laughs> a lolly, he says. Don't you mean sucker? You foolish pickle. Um, no, <laughs> I'm pretty darn sure that's what it is. Why would you even call me that? It's not even an insult. Well, you know what? Even if, like, even if, like, lolly isn't, like, an insult here, you know, in some other cultures, it probably is. So, you know what? One of these days you're going to go in one of those cultures, and then you're going to, like, say the wrong thing. And you're going to be like, oh, like, um, oh, can I get a lolly? Or you'll be like, you stare over a lolly. And you know what? That person's going to get very angry with you. And, you know, then they're going to, like, want to box your ears, and then you'll start a whole row. And you know what? Think you well, sucker. Listen, Mr. Pickle. I don't like you, and you don't like me. But no, actually, I like you quite a lot, Mr. Banana. You're nice. And you're pretty. Yeah. I'm just going to leave. You know, we've had a lot of laughs today, but banana on pickle violence is no laughing matter. It's quite a serious issue, and it's one that we must learn to address. Now the multiverse is over, the show's come to an end. Pickle and banana shall be the bestest of friends. Yeah.